Hello plant people, how are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name's Ashley and I'm a soil scientist. On this channel, I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. So if you like the sounds that, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Let me know in the comments where you hail from. And if I must say, happy Thanksgiving to all the Americans out there. Canadians had our Thanksgiving many, many weeks ago, but for the Americans, happy Thanksgiving. As stressful as it may be this year, I do truly hope that it is full of food and festivities. In today's video, we're talking about the soil amendment sphagnum moss. And if you aren't familiar, we have an entire series on this where we're going through all the different types of soil amendments out there. If you have a suggestion of a soil amendment you would like me to go over, please let me know in the comments below. I will be more than happy to do a video for you. We have so many different suggestions so far from pumice to qualizorb, sagna moss which is the one we're doing today bark you name it we have it so let's just jump into exactly what sphagnum moss is and why it's a soil amendment and how we can specifically use it in our system and i have some very interesting methods that you can utilize this stuff for i will have an amazon link down below for the type that i use i do like sphagnum moss if I don't like the product or I don't agree with the soil amendment, I actually don't have it in the Amazon store whatsoever, non-existent, because I don't want to give you guys junk. That is just my personal opinion and sphagnum moss made the list because I personally use it in my own systems. So it is in the Amazon store, the type, the brand that I use specifically. So sphagnum moss, what is it? It is a moss that grows in the bogs where actual peat moss is harvested from. So sphagnum moss is peat moss, but the difference is that peat moss is farther down in that profile. It's more highly degraded and is dead. We went over in the peat moss video exactly how this stuff is harvested, processed, etc., and so forth. Sphagnum moss is that top layer that is still alive. It is then dried out and then just packaged as a whole product, which is why it looks like it's actually kind of ish alive, minus the fact that it's no longer green. We'll be going over. Uh, at the end of the video, how to revive this stuff and how to bring it back to life. I think I've successfully done it. I will show you some video footage of exactly what mine looks like and how I did it, but there is a way to revive this stuff and bring it back to life. Now, what I will say with all my soil amendment videos, I always go over how this stuff is produced, how it's sourced, is it environmentally responsible, is it reusable, is it sustainable, etc., and so forth. And in a lot of cases, gardening and plant stuff is not sustainable in the sense that it is a non-renewable resource. Sphagnum moss falls into that template as a non-renewable in the sense that yes, we can grow more of it, but it needs very specific situation to survive in in order for us to grow more of it. So, I don't, despite all the research I try to make, I'm not familiar with where the actual sphagnum moss comes from. It may do say it comes off the top of peat bogs, but if you remember the peat moss video, I said that the top layer that's alive is actually removed in Canada anyways, and then placed in a nursery bog, which is then the bog that backfills the old bog to bring the old bog back to its original stance, which is essentially reclamation. Now, if the sphagnum moss that's alive is being harvested and being used to be put in horticultural systems, I don't know I, like, I just don't know how that happens because my understanding is that the live sphagnum moss is used as kind of the parent material that will then be put into the bog once it's no longer used. Now, I'm not sure maybe the excess is what's being used or if the sphagnum moss is being grown in a separate system outside of this. I couldn't find the information on that, but as far as I'm concerned, 
It is less processed than peat moss and therefore its environmental impact is smaller. However, if it's being harvested off of bogs, then it's not renewable because obviously it needed to grow. I don't know. That's just my standpoint, but that is what it is and where it comes from. There's 350 different species of sphagnum moss. And so your species or where it comes from is, is kind of dependent on where you are. If you want to reduce your environmental impact, all that stuff, obviously you're going to want to source something that's closer to home, something that's uh, harvested within your country. As always, we're going to be going over the pH, the cation exchange capacity, and the porosity because these are all very important when we're talking about soil amendments and what we're adding to our plant profile. So our pH is completely neutral. It is a neutral out of seven. Now you're probably wondering, well, peat moss is heavily acidic. And the reason for that is because peat moss is degraded and therefore is in the later stages of decomposition, meaning it has acidic properties to it solely because it's decomposing and there's obviously acidic acid which is used in the decomposition process. Sagnum moss because it is in the fresh living realm it needs that neutral pH to survive. If it was acidic it obviously would not survive because it is a plant despite the fact that it is moss so it is a neutral pH of 7. As this product degrades within your soil system, the pH will generally decrease. However, this will take time. You're going to notice it happening and it's going to stink if it does happen. So for the most part, it is a neutral seven, so long as it's newly introduced into your soil system. The cation exchange capacity of this product, while it is wet, is a beautiful number of 155 to around 185 milliequivalents per 100 grams. So it is higher than that of perlite. It's kind of actually around the same range as vermiculite. Meaning if you were to add fertilizer to this, whether that be organic or inorganic, it will be brought up into the sphagnum profile and delivered to your plants in a timely manner. Meaning it is not inert, like something like pure light or rocks, for example. It actually has a little bit of nutrient magnetism to it, which is actually very beneficial to your plant. But that also means it has a slight affinity towards salt, obviously. So I recommend not bottom watering and always trying to flush that system out as much as possible because sodium is positively charged. If we have any form of cation exchange capacity or negative charge to the system, then that uh, salt will be retained in the system. So we do want to make sure we're not bottom watering with sphagnum moss and that we're draining through the system entirely and washing out all those salts when applicable. So porosity, um, it has, this is hard. It's hard for me to give this one a uh, number to it, mostly because it has a very high ability to retain water, but it depends on how much you pack it in. So if you pack this stuff into a, um, if you're doing straight, I'll just show you what mine look like. So if we're doing a straight sphagnum moss system, which is what I have here, this is actually one of my imports that I have. Um, so I have a larger specimen of this, but let me know in the comments below. If you have a, a variegated compacta, if you notice that there's different qualities in specimens. So I have one that was locally purchased and it doesn't have as much variegation on it or um, the different densities or qualities of greens and whites differs from the one I bought from the store versus this one that I got from um, Thailand. Let me know. I'd be interested to know what you guys say because this one here is very beautiful, very small, but very beautiful plant. So anyways, I digress. Um, you can see one of his little roots here. So this is a fully sphagnum moss setup. And depending on how much I compact into this container will dictate how much aeration I have in the system. So if I can pack this in more, I have less airspace and therefore less gas exchange. But if I keep it light and fluffy, then I have more gas exchange and more airflow. 
meaning I won't end up with root rot. So, so long as you keep this light and fluffy, the porosity actually is really high. It's very good at draining. But if you compact it in, it's going to hold more moisture and it could result in root rot. So that's what makes this one just slightly confusing. However, um, I have it very lightly in there and I actually really like it as a standalone by itself. So I will do this. This is straight sphagnum. I water with my fish tank water, fun enough. And I just keep it moderately moist. You can see there's a little bit of moisture in there, but not too much. And you can also see the green in there. So this one is being grown in my Mars Hydro tent. And the combination to making this stuff come back alive, the sphagnum itself come back alive, is a mixture of moisture and then light. So I'll show you here another Hoya I have. I have a, a majority of my Hoyas actually are in a sphagnum system. So this Hoya here is not in the Mars Hydro. This is my, they look like stingrays to me, but um, Imbricata, my Hoya Imbricata. So I find him very unique, very beautiful. But what I have him in is not my Mars Hydro tent. I have him actually just on top of, whoa, this plywood piece here. Um, there is a grow light up there, but it's not a Mars Hydro quality grow light. And if you guys didn't know, I reuse like all my plastic. I try not to throw any plastic out. So I, this has a clear lid, which is perfect. I put a little bit of water in the bottom and then I have my imbricata in here and the moisture level is just, he loves it. So anyways, because I don't have as intense of a light on this Hoya, you can see my sphagnum moss is a drastically different color and is also very much so not alive. And so the mix or the solution to bringing your sphagnum moss back to life is actually a combination of light and moisture. So you can see the difference here. So the Mars Hydro was able to revive the sphag and the regular grow light, not so much, but this is what he looks like. And this is a sole sphagnum moss system. Now this guy here, I have sphagnum moss on the top. Again, he's in my Marge Hydro system. You can see lots of greenery in there. He's coming back to life. And then the rest is actually the Leca. You can see lots of my roots. This is a Monstera Peru another import that I have. He's doing very, very well. He's very, very happy. And in this system, I use the sphagnum moss to retain the moisture in the LECA below. And you can see it's nothing but success for me in this way. I find that if I do a LECA system um, and I'm losing moisture too quickly, that just the simple addition of half an inch or so of sphagnum moss is actually the end all be all to my solution and ensuring that I get enough moisture in there to maintain those roots without saturating the system to the point where it has standing water. You can also add sphagnum moss to your peat moss based soil profile. It will add a little bit of aeration. My biggest disclaimer on that though is that it will degrade over time. So you need to be careful. Um, if you're noticing compaction, if you're new, noticing a downturn in the plant, then you need to revive that sphagnum moss and maybe repot the plant. It is not like perlite or pumice in the sense that it's going to last for five plus years. It's going to degrade much quicker because it is a fully organic material. It is also very valuable in a bark system. So if you have an aeroid or an orchid that's in solely bark or in LECA and you want to up the factor in how much moisture is retained in that system, then sphagnum moss is the answer in that case. Overall, I think it's a great product. In summary, I think it hold on to nutrients in the capacity that is much needed for plants to survive. You can use it in a solely sphagnum moss. You can put plants in a solely sphagnum moss setup, nothing wrong with that. Or you can utilize it on top of LECA or you can put it in the potting soil itself. 
It's not so much for adding aeration and porosity to your soil, but it is really great at retaining moisture. The biggest thing to remember is that it degrades. It is organic and therefore over time it will begin to decompose. Once it decomposes, you're going to end up with compaction. You're going to end up with some acidity. So just keep your eye on it and make sure to keep it always fresh. If you're trying to revive it and bring it back to life, then moisture and light are your two key factors. You cannot just simply leave this in a room. It needs to be under a very intense light. The intense light I have mine under is my Mars Hydro. Check out my other videos to see how bright this thing is. I had the other one, the regular grow light, and I didn't seem to see any benefit per se. Regardless, the revival of it is not necessary. I want to thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye!